What have you got? It sounds a bit hoarse. Well, welcome to another wet, miserable, wet day. Um, there's loads of stuff out here that one's doing. Sort of a bit of fence repairs, some maintenance, stuff like that. And yes, if I was a bit tougher, I could go out and do it in the wind and the rain. But um, I don't know, maybe it's an age thing. I'm in my mid fifties now and these are all jobs that would be nice to be done, but don't actually have to be done. So all of my boundary fencing is actually stock proof. Nothing's escaping, nothing's getting away. And all I really want is a bit of a tidy up in some areas. So, so they're going to wait for the time being. Um, just um, had my breakfast and watched uh, the Funky Farmer's uh, bale off challenge. He's challenged Mr. Pemberton to uh, a bale unwrapping competition. I think he did it in 53 seconds, three bales. Um, I've, I've had a couple of messages and comments going, oh, you ought to do it, Ian, you ought to do it. So it's a case of, well, yeah, if, if I'm invited or challenged, yeah, I am. It was followed within 10 minutes by a message saying, go on, Ian, we'll have a bail off. So, um, Yes, I will partake, I will do it, but um, as I said to Richard, right now I'm trying to get through some of the hay in the barn. Won't be that long, only a couple of months, and we'll be looking at lambing, and I need the space under cover for, um, for this year's lambing, or next year's lambing. So I could, I could do three bales of hay haylage, but one, I'm changing the diet on the animal for one session, which I don't really want to do, and two, I just need the space. So. So Richard, yes, I will. I will uh, raise the challenge. I will have a crack at it and see if I can beat you. I reckon I stand a good chance. Um, but maybe I can also wait and see how quick Tom does it in as well. So I can then study the techniques and you know, make good comparisons. So, sorry about the wind. So there you go. So yes, I will do it, but it's just not quite yet. He hasn't put a time limit on it. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? It's typical, isn't it? Mm. The bitch with the most white on her is the one that most loves to roll in a fox turd. Cute little stinker. Yeah. And she comes out and greets you, goes, oh, give me some fuss. And you go, yeah, no, you're all right. Yeah, you can keep that. Oh, it's a squirrel, a squirrel. Squirrel, it's a squirrel, a squirrel. Where'd he go? Where's that squirrel go? Look at the wrong way. Look at the squirrel. Look at the squirrel. Look at the squirrel. Come on. Up his. Come on. Up his. Where'd he go? He's over there. <laughs> yeah. Which one of you landed in the stream? Oh, it was you. <laughs> yeah. The squirrel got away. Oh well. Never mind. Next time. We don't want them. So do you remember I said I had a space down in the um, wildlife area where I could get rid of a lot of our topsoil and subsoil and rubbish that we dug out from at the farm? I'll show you where it meant. Come on. Wait, this way. Come on. This way. Come on. So basically, this hedge line, well, I want to be able to maintain um, this hedge line from my side, my boundary, um, and there was a ditch in there, um, which I'd like to put, put back to work in ditch. But the problem is, although I cleared the first half of it, I leveled off with our digger and over us, it's not too bad here, and we have topsoiled some of this, as we go 
further down, it gets rougher and rougher. So we're looking at bringing our subsoil, etc., etc., down here and basically leveling this off so that I can get right around the outside of this piece of ground uh, with any machinery that I should need to. Um, that is why there is a gate there so we can get, get in and at the other end we haven't put the gate in yet but the uh, fence post or space is such a way that I can put a gate down there as well we could basically get in and get round look after our boundary um, we've um then add maybe about once this is done fencing our side making it stock proof and then I could because there's actually an awful lot of shelter in here I could maybe at certain times of the year allow cattle um, and even sheep to come in here they will maintain rides they will browse some of the vegetation um, and I know that on some of the rewarding programs a certain amount of activity from domestic livestock can be beneficial to the wildlife so as long as it's not overdone it needs to be kind of managed but I reckon I'm up to that task so uh, I think this is a summer job we're gonna need to dig out that um, island in the middle of the yard down there because that's got to go anyway uh, lots of things we want to do lots of plans a lot of it's going to revolve around availability of uh, time and of course money so because although some of it grows on trees for me not that much come on you two so there's rabbits down there. The little smells wonderful. Come on. I don't think it's ever going to get more full than that. Because it's actually overflowing down there. But. Yep, that's the dew pond we dug out earlier in the year. Um, started off really badly because it was so dry and the grey was cracking. We were thinking it would never seal up, but this was kind of this was kind of the idea. Now what we need to find out is now it's been filled up, and basically the um, sides of the or the banks have been kind of sealed. I hope it'd be interesting to see how long it holds the water, um, whether it will actually do what it was designed to do and create a haven and home for you know amphibians and reptiles to live here all year round that's the plan that's what we would like to do we would like to create an area where they can live all year round uh, I think looking at this what we might end up doing possibly uh, because it won't, um, won't involve too much destruction is actually putting a trench down to the ditch down there with a pop-up pipe in the middle so I can drain surplus water um, hopefully before it gets actually out into the field because I can then pick up a land drain outside so any water that's not getting in here I can pick up because that piece of field out there is wet uh, so yeah a couple of hundred meters of four, four inch perforated pipe load of uh, clean stone and a day or two on the digger should do that. I hope. Okay. Oh. My fence is still standing. I put all this fencing up when we first bought the farm. It took me six weeks to do it. I did actually create a load of videos on that so if anybody's interested in how I put oh she's at it again stop rolling in crap you dirty animal what have you found now whatever that is you stinker I shan't love you anymore if you keep doing that you munter where was I watching you so yeah, if anybody's interested in how I put this fencing up, uh, 
I pretty much did most of this 90% um, on my own. It was one of those things, uh, Mrs. P loves it when I, when I have a project that I can get my teeth stuck into and I actually get stuck into it. Uh, she doesn't see me until I finished it and it did, it took me six weeks and the weather was like it is now, it was not brilliant. But I'll put, um, I'll put a couple of uh, cards up so you can go back and find that and maybe maybe I'll put in together a, um, a series of videos on the fencing thing so and it's literally if fencing is your thing and it tickles you then you can watch me put up some fencing it was a task for sure stinker I don't want you, Mr. Burdock. Right, if you'll excuse me, I've just got to go over there and do a, a very important job, which will take me a minute or two. And all I've got to do is remember the electric wire. Actually, while we're talking about wire, although I've said it before, I'll just repeat it again for those who might be interested in. Um, stock fence comes like this. Not so much pig wire, the old pig wire is at equal size squares all the way up and down but stock fence you usually start up with the small squares at the bottom and as they go up they get gradually bigger um, now there are two ways of putting this fence up obviously you can put it up this way with the small squares at the bottom or you can put it up what some people would call upside down with the big squares at the bottom and that's down to a personal choice now for me um, I put the small squares at the bottom because dogs we get quite a few people around here walking dogs and stuff like that and I don't want dogs, even small dogs, going through the fence because even Biscuit would get through that. So dogs were the reason that I put the small squares at the bottom. The downside for that is um, we also keep sheep and with sheep, like a lot of other animals, the grass or bramble or tree bud or whatever else is always greener on the other side. So they'll stick their head through the wire. Now a sheep with the shape of its head can easily get its head through that one and with a little bit of a squeeze can get its head through that one. But he can't pull it back unless he tips it on its side. So when they're going in, they will happily tip their head on one side to push their head through that gap. But they're not bright enough to tip their head on one side to pull it back out. So quite often you'll get a sheep stuck in one or lambs, hoggets, ewes, bigger ewes will get stuck there. So a lot of farmers will put the fence upside down because the sheep can easily get her head in and out of this one and that one. Not so much this one, but usually what they're after is on the ground. So it's usually these two that they'll go for. Uh, so if you've got, if you're putting up this fencing, and it's fairly remote and you don't have a dog issue where you're not trying to deter the badger or anything else because that's the other reason for this is if the badger wants to come in here I can see where he's coming in because he would dig underneath it but um, if you don't have that issue then my um, recommendation would be to put that type of fencing upside down for sheep um, and it simply means that you're less likely to go out in the morning and find a dead one hung up in it because I have had sheep try and hang themselves in there I've also got one, again, if you go back, maybe I'll put a card up on the I Hate Sheep video from years ago. I used to have a lamb that used to spend most of his life with his head stuck in the fence until eventually I got fed up and ate him. That, that cured that. So they, they don't do that anymore in the deep freeze. So yeah, so if I could find that, maybe I'll put a card up for that as well. What she found. She's on the scent of something. Um, put a card up for that as well so yes so with your stock fence before you put it up make a decision what's it for what you're trying to keep in what you're trying to keep out and remember that sheep will put their heads through it pepper come up okay right i'll put the card up tonight yeah come up biscuit oh, biscuit biscuit won't come for a walk with the pups well she will but it's kind of begrudging it's like only if i have to Come on, because they tend to jump on her a bit and she doesn't like it. 
Ah, that brings me to another point. Uh, some of you will have noticed, well, you must have noticed it because it was on the intro on the way in. We have brightened up our logo a little bit. Uh, I did that because a lot of other up and coming uh, farming channels got some very nice uh, Four Winds Farm, I Farm, We Farm. They came up with some really nice, colourful logos and people were starting to compare. I was getting messages saying, Hi, I love your channel, but your logo sucks. <laughs> words to that effect that it's like it's the most boring logo of all of you and you could do better so so we did and as far as the logo is concerned uh, this channel is about yes the farm and about the family and everything else but if you've been with me long enough you know that I don't take life too seriously I try not to take myself too seriously so we went down the slightly animated route of trying to make the logo more colorful but also attractive, smiley and happy. And, um, and although we don't create videos for kids, that was, that was the difficult bit for me. I wanted to make it look kid friendly, but we don't make videos for kids. Not quite sure if that's coming across how I want it to, but uh, yeah, well, the logo basically reflect us. It's a case of happy farm, happy animals, um, et cetera, et cetera. But, Biscuit didn't get added into the logo and a few comments have been up. Why isn't Biscuit in there? I'm not going to buy a mug off of you the logo if Biscuit's not on it. Um, I am going to add about that because the thing is Biscuit is now five years old. Uh, so she's hopefully going to be with me for at least another five years, hopefully another ten. But if that logo goes on forever, um, it could like last my dog. Not something I'm looking forward to, which means I'd have to buy another dog it looks exactly like her. Well, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, we are going to bow to pressure, and I've spoken to the artist and asked him if he can put a small terrier with a brown face, happy face, into the into the logo. So the first batch of mugs and stuff that we have ordered will not have that. Um, but so that just means it's going to be a limited edition because. The next lot will so those of you who really 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 want a mug or something that includes biscuit in the logo you might have to wait a little bit uh, because i'm not gonna order those until i've got rid of the first lot so if you really 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 want one you can get it faster by buying one of the first mugs without the dog in it hey see sales pitch right okay I think we're more or less done down here. I've been down and seen everything I wanted to. All the sheep are on their feet. Nothing's dead. Nothing's lame. Nothing's mucky. Water's running away. You could do with a bath. Cup of tea time, I reckon. Pepper! Pepper! Good girl. Good girl. Pepper! Come here. Good girl. Soon. Just not yet. He's keen. Oh look, there goes Grumpy. Yeah, still not having nothing to do with the rest of them. Come on, Pepper, you need to get just a little bit bigger yet. Last thing you want is a young dog getting too keen, then getting battered by a ewe because it can spoil them. So I'd just as soon be a bit patient, wait a bit longer.